Hey everyone! Okay, so <laughs> I think I'm ready. Uh, I was, I got about halfway through my seed unboxing video yesterday before I, I had to go with some of my kids. But my, my kids are up and I, I think I have them, I have them ready so I can get through the rest of it. Um, yeah, so I'm about halfway through. I did, I did go through my seeds a little bit yesterday. Oh, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> All my precious seeds. <laughs> um, yeah, so yesterday I, I went through it a little bit and, and organized it a bit. Um, because today I actually was getting ready to get some stuff started. So I have this like entire bag of things that, that I pulled out here. And this is a bunch of my peppers and, um, my onions and my leeks, the stuff that I can, I can get started now. Um, I didn't actually get to the point that I got anything planted today, even though I was hoping to, <laughs> um, but but yeah, I did, I, I did a bit of a sort, so I'm going to start with that stuff here before I then get on to my other things. And I, I was kind of laughing because I was talking a bit yesterday about how bad my, my organizing system is. And, and so I kind of, I did my organizing system of like, I took them and I put them into bags and like, this is, this is me sorting them. And I did like, so here's like a bag of like tomatoes and other things that'll have to be started soon. And then I sorted some into like a bag that's like just flowers and then a bag of like random stuff. And yeah, that there is exactly what my seed sorting system is, <laughs> which I, I don't necessarily recommend. Okay, so... Some of this stuff that I'm going to go through first here, if you guys were here yesterday, I might have gone through it already because I don't, I, most of this I don't think I'd, I'd, I'd pulled out yet, but there are a few things that I had pulled out. Like I know like I, I talked about the loofah already and, and that was one that I wanted to get started today. Um, yeah, and I mentioned this like North Star onion. This was the onion that you can direct seed. Um, I, I am going to direct seed that, but I pulled out all the onions just to keep my onions together. Um, here's another onion, a sweet white wing onion. And oh, I, so I also went through, so this is like my order sheet. And on it, it, like at the very end, I didn't go through it when I just first opened it up. Um, but on it was like about 12 things that I ordered that they, they didn't have in stock. And so there was like, there's a couple other onions that I, that I ordered. Um, sorry, Sam's coming. Sam, you can't have the tablet in here. Or if, no, if you want no. to, you can. But... No. <laughs> I set Sam, sorry guys. I set Sam up so he could watch some shows, but he's, he's instantly... Yeah, ought to not. Okay, but not in here. You have to go watch it. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I saw someone asking there about, about like, the, the money. Um, so, like, yeah, because obviously I've, I've spent, like, a stupid amount of money on seeds this year. I have, like, I've spent, like, $2,000 on seeds. Um, but, sorry, my phone's having issues now. Um... Yeah, I spent two thousand dollars on seeds, and the the plan is like I don't exactly know how much money that we will make exactly, but ha like most of these seeds are for doing seedlings, and like we're hoping if if everything goes as planned, that I would be able to probably sell about four thousand dollars worth of of seedlings, um, and. I know that like to say I spent $2,000 just on seedlings and like that's not even including like, you know, the other $1,000 I spent on like seedling trays and, and all the other stuff that will go into making it. Um, I, like I know that the 
the balance on there doesn't really make a ton of sense. But I'll have, like, tons of seeds left over, like, a bunch of these things, you know, like, you know, like, here, I have a, I have a gram of mouse melons. This has, like, 300, 300 seeds in it, and this seed should be good for next year, too. So a lot of these seeds that I'm, that I've purchased to do seedlings will actually, you know, like, I'm only going to be planting out a thousand dollars worth of seed. And then an, another reason is that um, like we're building a business. So the numbers that I'm putting out there, that's like me saying like, oh, if I got a hundred people who came and spent $40 with me, that would be $4,000 in, in, um, in seedlings that I'll sell. And like, I'm, I think I'm gonna have more seedlings than that amount of money. I just, I don't want to like, think that I'll be able to have a thousand customers. Like where we live, I probably like have a, a like a population that would maybe be willing to come out of like a hundred thousand. So to say that like a hundred of them would actually like drive to my house and come buy $40 worth of seedlings with me feels like, you know, like that's like a, that's a good goal to work towards. Um, you know, like we're setting up a farm for the first time this year and, and a huge thing that that we're realizing is just takes a ton of money and it, it's building a business, right? So you don't really make a lot of money first couple of years because you, you're, you're building the business. So yes, I know it's a crazy amount of seeds. Yes, I know that I probably won't make very much money off of it. You know, like at the end of the year, like, you know, if I tell you guys like, oh, the farm and my seedling business made like $10,000, like I'll be excited to say that. But like, you know, all the videos showing all the work that I've done and all the money that I've spent to get to that number, like would make it look a little futile, but like big picture, this is like five year plan, like first year, <laughs> we can't, can't judge the five year plan on the first year. So that's my spiel on on uh, why A, it's okay to spend $2,000 on seeds, and uh, B, why not everyone should spend $2,000 on seeds. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I have these kind of sorted. Okay, so I don't know if I did this one, but I got a leak. And, you know, like, uh, uh, like I was saying yesterday, there's uh, so much that, that, um, that I ordered that I don't necessarily remember remember anything um and so usually I'm care like I try to get a short season leak just because I'm really bad at at like doing stuff so I like to get the like this one's a 95 day leak um and then we get hot here so there's a good chance that this leak would be like a variety that said it was better better for heat and and then a shorter time type thing um okay so here's something that I bought and I kind of regret I kind of regret not buying more now that I, I have it in hand, but this is Sakura and this is a cherry tomato and I only got 25 seeds and I don't know if you guys can see the price there, but <laughs> these were, I seeing the price, I maybe know why I didn't buy the 100 pack because this was, um, you know, like 50 cents a seed. Uh, but this is the variety that uh, Curtis Stone in his book says that he grew as his like production cherry tomato for when he was like selling cherry tomatoes and and so like I'd never heard of it um, but I was like well like that's what I want to get <laughs> because one of our plans and yeah so I got 25 seeds so I'm, I'm not going to share any of these these are all going to be for me and that's why they're in with my peppers because this seed, like I can start tomatoes early because I can plant my tomatoes into the ground super early. I don't, I don't have to worry about, about these, um, needing to be small when, when I sell seedlings. Uh, but yeah, like my plan for tomatoes is I want to mostly sell cherry tomatoes and, uh, and this one's supposed to be super, super prolific and like sweet, good flavor, like easy, easy to grow, easy to, uh, to keep, like, you know, they're not gonna go bad before I can like sell them in a day or two. And, um, and then I'm gonna mix it in. I, uh, like I got a bunch of wild boar farms. 
uh, the, the name of it was Sakura, the tomato that like specifically I was talking about. Um, but I also have, have, um, have, uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Um, Wild Boar Farms. I, I bought like a ton of tomatoes from them and I'm super excited to do uh, Berry's Crazy Cherry, I think is, <laughs> I keep saying it wrong on videos when I like go back and hear myself say it, but I think it's Berry's Crazy Cherry because it's not Brad. <laughs> um, and it's like a crazy, crazy prolific yellow tomato. And then I also got a green zebra cherry tomato from Wild Boar Farms too. And so what I'm hoping to be able to do is offer like baskets of cherry tomatoes. That'll be a blend of, of like colors. So they look super fun and funky. Um, yeah, but so that Secura is going to be the Secura and then the Berry's Crazy Cherry is going to be my base. So that's, that's why I bought that. But yeah, I'm I like I'm super excited to try that one just because I haven't really heard much of it, and I'm I'm a bit of a seed snob. If seeds are super expensive, it almost makes me excited to grow them because I'm like, well, there's a reason why it's expensive, and if no one else is talking about it and super expensive, like it's either like super rare or like it's super awesome, but like home gardeners don't want to spend the money. <laughs> Um, as for hemp seeds, uh, I am in Canada, so, uh, hemp, <laughs> all hemp products have been, uh, legalized, um, but you can't have any sort of content about, uh, marijuana on YouTube, so I am not saying if we will or will not do that, but I will say that we 100% will show none of that in any of our videos because it's just not worth the effort. Um, but like uh, I'm in BC, like growing pot is, is even though this is the first year that it's legal, like it, it's very, very common. <laughs> um, okay. So I showed this before, but so I got uh, some, another pack of cucamelons and I grew these for the first time last year. And these were like super awesome and super fun. Um, these are in to, with all the rest of my seeds, because last year when I grew them, I actually thought that I, I killed them all, um, because they took a month to germinate. Like, I started these around the time when I would have done, like, a cucumber, and, like, I didn't think anything would ever happen, and then they were, like, like, this big, they were, like, this small for another month, and then, and then I planted them and they eventually grew, um, but so this year I want, I want them big and, and have like a strong start. Cause I've, I've heard other people online say they can take like three months to really get going, but once they grow, then they grow like crazy. And I, I felt like I didn't get the production that I wanted out of them. And like everything in the garden was, was like horrible last year, just cause, you know, starting a garden in the middle of July in where we are like that just doesn't give you much time um but yeah so i'm excited to give those like a real go this year so i have them in with my peppers um here's a ace hybrid sweet pepper um i didn't order too many peppers uh just just because they are a little bit more difficult and i didn't know like for me personally and i didn't know how well they'd sell i knew people coming would be excited about tomatoes and i i knew if i focused on the tomato sorry guys i'm gonna turn this the, it's just having issues with the light because it's getting dark outside um yeah i knew if i focused on the tomatoes that it would that would be a specific customer, but I, I don't feel very confident focusing on peppers. So I didn't order too many. Like, like I have a stack here, um, but the, these are mostly just like like a mix of hot peppers. Um, whereas if, if I was more like, you know, a few years down the road, if I'm still doing these seedling things, I'd probably have a lot more sweet peppers in, in my mix that I'd grow. Um, I just, I'm not a super confident pepper grow so <laughs> so I don't have too much advice on peppers um, here's another here's another pepper that I got this is a, a sweet pepper and it's just like a little one um, and yeah I like I get I got one that's they're called Hungarian cheese peppers and they're like a mini sweet pepper that I get from from uh, 
from West Coast Seeds. And this seemed like a similar idea. So that's that's why I ordered that one. Um, and then I, I like hot peppers. So when I was going through these seeds, I was like, oh, I must have like just ordered every single hot pepper they had pretty much as like a way to like justify having like one of everything. Uh, so I got a Cheyenne, Cheyenne hot pepper. And these packs were all small. Like these all have like kind of like 12 seeds in it. So it made it a little bit easier. This is a super chili. Um, a crackle hybrid. This one's saying that it's like, like Indian curries. I don't know. <laughs> I, I was kind of surprised when I was going through how many peppers I had. Uh, Campion hybrid. Uh, that's, uh, I think that this was, this is like a jalapeno or sereno type. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a sweet pepper. This is funky. This like purple, what's this called? Purple star. Um, you know, like when, one of my thinkings with like all these seeds that I ordered is I like I bought all the seeds that were like cool and different, like all the weird colored things just so I could just so I could share it um, as like a like share a picture of it and be like, look, I have like purple bell peppers. You might not be able to find that where you normally buy seeds. If you're super excited about purple bell peppers, you should come to my house. And then once they're at my house and they buy like three purple bell peppers, then maybe I can get them to buy like 20 other things while they're at it. Cause like, that's what I do. If I went to buy one thing, I'd buy like tons of stuff when I was there. So the, if I have, you know, if, if I, like I purchased probably about like 20 things that I thought were just like unique and different specifically just to, to use it as, yeah, I, I did buy all the stuff, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, okay. Like, honestly, I was like shocked at William Dam seeds because like, yeah, if I like had a box of this many different things from West Coast Seeds, I would have been like pretty close to buying their entire catalog. But like the William Dam Seeds catalog was like massive. Like I didn't even buy half of what they had. Like there, there was a lot of stuff to pick from. And I like, and I know that with West Coast Seeds, sometimes I feel a little bit limited when I'm buying from them because they're like, they have a lot of stuff that's like, oh, this will grow well in like cool summers, which is more their region. Like I'm super close to where they're based out of, but the Okanagan is just kind of this like really unique little weather spot where we're like super hot and dry. So what I'm looking for when I'm looking for seeds is stuff that's like drought tolerant and like won't bolt and like, you know, like can handle the heat and can handle a little like abuse of me, like being like, oh, you don't need water every day. You can have water every second day. Like, whereas like in, in some, you know, you, you gotta read, you gotta read your catalogs carefully, right? Like it, for me, finding stuff that does really well in humid, hot weather isn't, isn't necessarily helpful. What I need is like humid, dry weather. And, and sometimes it can be hard to find. Um, yeah. Okay. So continuing on flaming f flare. This is a hot pepper again. Yeah. That one, they're like, I, I love these packets cause they all look really good. <clears throat> um, emerald fire. I think that's another, yeah, I don't know. That looks really good. <laughs> I love hot peppers. Like I'm, I'm not a super like spicy food person, but, but I definitely, I love it. Um, this, uh, Takara, I think this one, I, I think was, this isn't a hot pepper but it's not quite a sweet pepper. It, it's a, it's a Japanese stir fry pepper. And, and so you cook it like whole. And I think that it was, it has like a, a tiny bit of a kick to it, but it's like it, it, the flavor was supposed to be really unique. So I'm, I'm excited to try that. Yeah. And so, so that stack there, that's all the stuff that I, I pulled out and, and I'm going to be starting 
tomorrow because I have I had everything prepped up today. I got I got this whole thing. I have I have about 20 varieties of peppers that I'm going to be starting and then I'm going to do a couple trays of onions and, and the leeks and a couple trays of of the tomatoes like for me to get started. Um, so I'm I'm super excited about that. Yeah, like now that now that I have my seeds, I it, like I'm looking outside and it's like s still snow all over my ground. Um, but you know, like March is gonna be here soon. Like in in the farm plan that I made, I wanted to start I wanted to start prepping garden beds because so we're gonna we're gonna have a thou or four thousand square foot farm, but I don't have any of that prepared. <laughs> And I have like plans to start planting things like in April. So like as of right now, we have like a foot of snow on the ground and the like the ground is frozen. And so, you know, sometime within the next month, I need to like, like till grass and like prep, prep garden beds and stuff. So like the t my timeline is feeling a little bit ridiculous to me right now, but I'm going to make it work. It's It's, it's all going to work out. Like, I, I have faith. I know I'll be able to do it. Okay, so, um, I think I sorted. Okay, so I have a bunch of lettuces here. Um, and I, one of the things that I found when I was selling seeds is that I needed, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by the comments. Uh, yeah, so onions, I only ever grow onions by seed because I find, um, kind of like what I was saying about the hot summers. The, the hot, dry summers make it so the little mini bulbs of onions don't do very well for me. They either go to seed or they, they just don't get super big. Like, they're ready early, but I'd rather get, like, a good, strong storage onion. Um, so I always I always do my onions from seed. It's, it's one of those things that, like, it, it felt a little intimidating for me to do onions from seed... Or, or like, cause I buy them, I used to buy them at the, I didn't, like, I've only done seedlings for a couple of years cause I, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> and I used to be able to buy all my seedlings for like a hundred bucks. And so I buy the, the, like, they'd have like a little like square container and it would be like just, you know, a mat, like it looked like, like those cat grasses that you can buy of onions. And they looked super intimidating to me to purchase them and to, to grow them like that. Um, cause what you basically do is you take them and you break it apart and you like thread them all out until you have this like handful of like onions that you can then like dibble into the ground. Um, but it like, it was really simple. They, you know, it felt like you were killing the plants, but they, you know, they barely even had any sort of transplant shock from, from being super mean to them. Um, but yeah, the onion, the onions from seeds just do really, really good. Like, like I highly recommend if anyone's never tried it before to give it a try because it's usually not a big monetary investment. Um, and you know, if, if you like growing onions, it, for me personally, it's the way to go, but you do, if you're doing the onions yourself, they actually do need quite a while, um, in the seed starting before getting planted out. So that's that's why I have them, that's why my plan is to do the onions at the same time that I'm, I'm doing the peppers, which is my absolute earliest. And also um, they'll kind of, they'll hold quite well. Like I don't have to, like I'm being cautious about when to start my tomatoes because I don't want to have to keep um, potting them up and up and up. Uh, whereas the onions, like they'll just get more and more root bound, but like, it, it doesn't necessarily kill them, at least in, in my experience. <laughs> okay, so I have a bunch of lettuces here, and I, like, I'm not going to grow any of these, but when I was selling the seedlings last year, everyone wanted, everyone wanted to buy things like starts of lettuce and, and kales and, and stuff like that off of me, which I thought was ridiculous, because literally, like, you put lettuce in the ground, it grows, like, it, you know, it's it, it's a weird thing to buy as a seedling to me personally because I've always grown mostly by direct seed. Um, but people wanted it, so like, I'll I'll do that for them for their money. Like that's fine, trade for me. So I bought a couple things that I thought would be appealing to people who want to buy that kind of stuff. Um, so I got a 
relay organic and for this, I was I was literally just buying them based on on looks. I don't even think I I really like read read any descriptions on them. Um, here's a Sierra M I. Uh, yeah, this this is just like a, a basic one. I got I got a couple. Yeah, cause I so I got a mini red romaine that I showed yesterday and that one I was like oh people are gonna think that's awesome and then here's like another romaine coastal star um and then I got a butter crunch uh I like I, I don't like I don't like salads and and I don't really like um lettuce like I you know I just said I, I never water things and if you don't water your lettuce like crazy here because it never rains in the summer it's just it's bitter and it's gross um, so anytime I've grown lettuce, it's, I haven't liked it because I don't take care of it the way you're supposed to. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, other people will. So I bought that for them. Uh, here, oh, this is, oh, this is one of my favorite eggplants. Uh, Travidada. Uh, let me try that again. Tra, yeah, maybe Travi, Travita. I don't know. <laughs> I, some sort of Italian looking name. Um, this, like, this one I've grown before and it's super prolific and it's like a classic eggplant shape, you know, it's like the, you know, like the big kind of European style eggplants, which I love because like I just slice them and it's like a steak. It's like the best thing ever. Eggplant's amazing because literally you can like pour a cup of oil on it and it'll absorb all of it and still like not even like be, like it doesn't ever feel greasy. So I, any, anything that like you can pan fry with the amount of oil that you'd use to deep fry sounds amazing to me oh so this is interesting so this one says overpack 20 percent due to poor seed crop germination so that's that's interesting because so this is the first time i bought from this company so i like you know i haven't i hadn't seen any of that on any of the ones that I've gone through so far but that's nice because they always like you know nicer companies they all always say what their their germination rate is they always um will do germination tests of of their stock and then then mark it on their packets usually um which like I find really helpful for when I'm seeding because when I'm direct seeding you know like I'll I'll direct seed in a density that makes sense for you know, if it's, if it's 99% germination rate, I'm not going to put extras in, but you know, if it's a 60% germination rate, then I'll put extras and same like for this. So because they like did the overpack and they've like notified me to the fact that it's going to be going to have some germination issues like this, I would have normally done one seed per cell for doing starts, but I'll do two just, just to kind of, you know, cover my butt. Um, and so th what this is, what's the name of this? Uh, red ball and this is a purple Brussels sprouts this is like another one that I that I ordered because I figured people might be excited enough about that um you know I was saying yesterday I I love I love Instagram I'm on Instagram talking to people about gardens and stuff all the time and and I kind of start to see a lot of a lot of trends popping up. It'll be like stuff that I never saw and then all of a sudden I'll see it and then everyone starts doing things. And last year, like, you know, only a few people had the purple, um, the purple Brussels sprouts, but anytime anyone posted the purple Brussels sprouts, like everyone went crazy. Everyone was like, oh my God, purple Brussels sprouts, like that's amazing. Um, so like, I think that that'll be exciting for people buying, buying the seedlings from me. Here's a cabbage. It's El Costa hybrid. Um, I, I, they had so many cabbages on, on the site. It, it was hard for me, like, to, to even know what to pick. And I think I just, I went through and I got like an, like a purple, a green, like a, you know, a rough, that was like the ruffled one. And I just kind of went through and I got the one that seemed like would be best suited to the area, but, but yeah, it, it was really hard to pick on the cabbages because I don't have a ton of experience. And I know that when I've gone to buy cabbages before, like at, or like seen them being sold at places where they do seedlings, they're just kind of, it's like red cabbage, green cabbage. They're not, they're not advertising anything like name wise. Um, 
But yeah, so because of that, I, I didn't like get three different varieties of cabbage because, you know, may, I don't know if that's something that like I'm a snob. I like I'll buy things specifically for for name, like because I want the specific features to that. Um, but I like I don't know. I don't know if other people are like that about cabbages. Um, as for like pests for cabbages in our area. Um, like, I don't really, I don't really know because I haven't grown a ton. I struggled a lot with aphids and aphids I think are like the worst and they're gross. And, and I like, people have all these tricks for how to like deal with aphids. Like, oh, spray like soap on them or like go out there and like, like wash them off. Um, but like... I, like I'm not I'm not gonna do that that's like <laughs> I'll just like do stuff that doesn't get aphids because the other thing too is like here the it's like it's usually really good conditions for aphids because it'll be hot and dry so if you start getting aphids it goes from like having a couple aphids on your plant to like it's literally just like coated in aphids and they're like at that point it's just like pull it out of the ground and throw it in the garbage because no one wants to go out there and like try to wash like an entire plant's worth of aphids off of something and then they'll just they'll be coated by the end of the day again so so yeah i i know that there are a handful of pests because i think that it, cabbages also like the brassicas also suffer from like the white fly i think it is um as what well, like which might be like just another name for the for the the cabbage moth but yeah, I, I know there's a handful of pests that are issues for cabbages here specifically, but I, I can't, I don't really, I'm not really able to help at all ever with any sort of pest issues because I kind of like, I take a little bit of a permaculture approach to like pest management of, I like, I just, I, like, I don't deal with it. Um, I'll, the way I'll deal with pests is I'll, I'll create habitat to bring in like predators to the pests but yeah like I've I'll, I've had flea beetle in the past and when I've gone to like look into how to deal with it it's you know like there's a handful of things that you can do but it's a lot of work and and then there there's also no guarantees and then because of the fact that I'm I'm like it's just my home garden like I don't care like I'll eat something that has like bug holes in it that doesn't bother me at all um, and as Behavens said, my plan for like farm pest management is like exactly that. I'm just going to use like the, the insect netting because it's, it's the same thing. It's like, I could, I could just do preventative measures and, and, you know, let the, not have to deal with then dealing with the pests when they show up or if they show up. Um, but yeah, like I, it's just, it's just too much work to to try to stay on top of stuff. There are a few things though, because we, cause we're in farm area and um, you know, I, there are a few things that I do, first of all, legally have to do. Um, there is a uh, codling moth that gets into like apples and pears and legally you need to be, you either need to spray all of your trees or you need to do like actually keep on top of like pest management for those because if you get infested with it you need to you need to get rid of it um and then another thing is uh so like the fruit fly is like so we're in like a major orchard area and Kelowna actually grows a lot of cherries and then we also do a lot of like other other small fruits too and um and the, the fruit fly is, is super, super destructive to crops. And um, so we like, we're right beside a cherry orchard and we have cherry trees. And like, we will, we, we want to get an organic, um, like, you know, system in place for dealing with the fruit fly on our cherry trees, but we haven't been able to do that. So we actually let our neighbor come and spray our cherry trees because we like, we couldn't, we, we couldn't feel good about, we, we knew there's fruit flies in our trees and we, we couldn't let his trees get infested and potentially destroy like his entire <laughs> his entire um 
like farming operation just because we were too lazy to get our organic stuff in. So yeah, we let them come and deal with the fruit fly on our property just because we didn't, we didn't want to, you know, risk that for him. But yeah, being, being in an actual like agricultural area, there is some stuff that we do need to do just to protect other people in the agricultural area. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, so here's a pumpkin, small sugar. Oh, sorry guys. What, what's going on, Leah? Leah, what? You're good? Okay. <laughs> They're yelling at me. What? You're fine. Leah, just let him let him have the tablet, okay? The the hey Leah. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Leah, you can go get the cell phone. It's over by the plug-in. You can play with that, okay? Yay. But just let him just let him have that. Um for paperwork for selling produce. Um, like they're like, we're not crazy like California where you have to do like a ton of crazy stuff. There's actually, they're actually pretty permitting for doing like small scale farming. Um, and we don't even need to like have like a business license or anything from our community to, to like go and sell at a farmer's market. Um, but we do, we'll have to have like insurance. We have to have like insurance for our property, just like for ourselves. And then we need insurance for the, for selling at the farmer's market as well. Um, and then like, you know, there's best practices, but I've, I've been surprised when I've gone to like start researching it, how, like how few hoops I have to jump through to do small scale agriculture when you when you scale up into some of the bigger stuff then then you need to do a lot more um but I you know I haven't really been looking into that because I don't have to and you know that's something to look into in the future oh keep on keep going sorry guys I'm like <laughs> it's, like I, I knew opening this order was going to take forever because I knew I'd get distracted and talk on and on but this it is a lot of seeds <laughs> okay so here's a cauliflower this is veronica hybrid organic this is a like a romanesco one um yeah and so i like i ordered all these like super funky cauliflowers just because i thought that they'd be they'd be super exciting for for people um here's a tomato yellow pear tomato which I'll do, but obviously it's not as good as the yellow pear tomato uh, from uh, Wild Boar Farms of Berry's Crazy Cherry. So that one isn't in my list of things I'm gonna grow. Uh, though this is, this is super sweet. Uh, this is like a, you know, a really good, really prolific cherry tomato. And like, I've, I've done this one. This is like super classic. This is like, you can get that anywhere, but sometimes they're classic for a reason. Oh, this one I'm super excited about. I made my mom grow this for me last year because I, I didn't actually have space to do it in the garden. That was the first time I'd heard of it. Um, it's called Sweet Hearts and it's, it's a grape tomato and the flavor was supposed to be really, really good on it. And it's supposed to be like one of the most prolific tomatoes ever. Um, and the seed is like crazy expensive. So this 25 pack, 19 bucks. And last year when I bought them, the seeds were crazy expensive too. So I, I really wanted to see if it was worth the money. And, and it was, it was, it was crazy. Uh, my number one tomato is Juliet and it's still my number one tomato cause I love how meaty and dry it is. But the, production on that one which is sweethearts it was it was like one of the most productive tomatoes i've ever grown and then it had a lot more of that like really sweet cherry tomato type flavor sorry I said that. sam what's what's going on leah did you just give it back to him Oh, so the yellow pear tomato that, that I just said, um, I got one and I think it was just called yellow pear. And this was just like, you know, like a whatever one that I got. Um, but I bought like a one that I'm really, really excited about from Wild Boar Farms, which is a yellow pear tomato called Berry's Crazy Cherry. And it's supposed to be the most productive tomato people have like ever grown. So <laughs> the, like the idea of like a plant that like, you know, just grows a crazy amount. 
gets me super excited because I'm all about I'm all about like production per square foot from growing in my small space for so long. So I like I've been I've been excited about getting my hands on the Berries Crazy Cherry um, ever since I heard of it for the first time last summer. So I've I've like I'm coming on like nine months of excitement on finally getting to try it. Uh, here's a Cherokee purple tomato. Um, I've, I've never done this one before, but I know that people, I know that people like are obsessed with it and it's supposed to, oh, and here's another one, uh, Brandywine. Like both of these are kind of like classic heirloom ones that, that people like, it has name recognition behind it j more so than just being like a, an heirloom tomato. So I, I know that even though like those, to me, those aren't super exciting. I think having those will, will be good for me for the selling, selling things. People recognize that name. Um, here's Mountain Spring, Spring, uh, tomato. And I think someone, I, I don't know if it was yesterday someone was telling me or, or if I was having a conversation somewhere else on the internet, but someone I think was telling me that this is their like number one favorite tomato to grow. And I'd never actually heard of this before. So I'm, I like I actually want to keep one of these aside. Um, okay, here's some flowers. This is a double click Cosmo. I got a couple different Cosmos and they're like the first time I grew Cosmos was a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, so this one's a w a double flower. So that it's like a super frilly Cosmo. Um, but yeah, I I really liked the Cosmos. They were super simple and and easy to grow. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to do it again. Uh, dark green Italian parsley. This, I'm, I bought this for doing seedlings and then also I'm going to grow some of this for the farm. I'm going to do a bed of, of herbs. And so I'm going to do like cilantro, parsley, basil, like kind of like those just standard basics. And so I got a flat parsley and a curly parsley. That, that I'm planning on doing but th yeah so that's something that I actually that packet actually has quite a bit in it because I'm gonna have a couple more than a couple plants on that one yeah it's so about like it's Smith's family ranch um so backstory on this because I know it's great like I know the title it's crazy but <laughs> um uh, so I'm I'm growing seedlings to sell and I also am starting a small farm as well as I'll have probably a couple thousand square feet of home garden. So so this is crazy, I, but I don't have a 10,000 square foot home garden. I just I, I'll have 10,000 square feet of growing space. Um, but yeah, this this is enough food to like feed <laughs> many, many people. This is more than just family. Um, here's a Dima summer squash. And I, I got this, I, I like the look of it. I'm obsessed with zucchini. Zucchini's like one of my favorite things. I like, I always get confused when people are like, I planted two zucchini plants and I always make that mistake every year because like you just end up with so much zucchini. And I every year plant like 10 zucchini plants and they never produce enough for me. I'm never happy. I'm like, why do I always do this? I always, the internet's always on about like, oh, you can't, too many zucchini plants and they convince me that I don't actually want like like 50 feet of zucchini plants when I do I do want that many zucchinis because I'll for like a meal we'll like we like the smaller size zucchinis like you know like kind of the four to six inch size and I'll like I'll take like you know how many like 10 of those cut them in half and bake them or like barbecue them just with like salt and sometimes like cheese and like i'll gladly eat like three of three of those as like a side with dinner and like like raw zucchini spears like i'll like i'll take a small zucchini and just <laughs> and uh and we like oversized zucchini to stock into the into the freezer too. So if we ever miss zucchinis, we're not like, oh, like pig food. We're like, yes, awesome. Like this, we can grate this up and put it in the freezer so we still have zucchini over over the winter too. So um, I I think I think my plan, so there's four zucchinis. This like this is one of them. So because I like I'm gonna do I'm gonna do I think a hundred feet. Of, of summer squash is my plan. And I'm gonna do that 
and then I have a yellow zucchini and then I have a classic green zucchini and then I'm going to do the yellow patty pan that's uh, the name of it is sunburst and so I'm going to grow all those to sell for the farmer's market um, and then if they produce like crazy and no one wants to buy zucchini from me then I'll be happy because I'll finally have my my too many zucchini plants for the first time in my life um okay so here's a kale this is black magic and this is this is like one of those like dinosaur kales um this it's not my favorite but everyone loves it so i should be able to sell that okay here's some flowers this is a snapdragon this is rocket mix um i've i don't like, I don't really know much about snapdragons. Like, I remember being a kid and my mom having some in the home garden. But Mommy. apparently, what? I don't know what you have. Oh, uh, I made you fries. I made you the yam fries. Okay. The, the pan is on the, on the, on the stove top. Okay, Mommy. Yeah? Yeah? I Sorry. What? It's, it's on the counter. It's on the counter. It's over by like where the plug-in is. But yeah, grab the pan. It should be cooled. And I made all of those for you. Like, yeah, I, I made it so that when you got up, you'd have them for dinner. I made, Leah's obsessed with yam fries. So I made her a tray of yam fries so that when she woke up, they'd be like ready for her to eat for exactly this. I knew this moment was coming. So far, my plan is working. I might be able to get through this. Okay. Um, so this is Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato. And uh, in, in Kelowna, people always talk about like German Green Tomatoes. It's another one of those heirlooms that, that people like. So, you know, I, I don't know if Aunt Ruby's is specifically a variety that, that people like, or, you know, if it's just German Green is what it's normally, normally goes by. But I, my, my mom is someone who grows that too. And I've had it before and it's, it's actually really good. It, it has like almost like a fruity flavor and then the acid on it is lower. I, I personally like, I like an acidic tomato, but my mom, my mom doesn't always do that. Doesn't like that. And, um, and she really likes that one. Yeah, I've, I've seen the German pinks before too. Uh, as to what is my favorite way to eat zucchini and why? My favorite way to eat zucchini is every way and why is because zucchini is the best. <laughs> I like, I literally could eat like, it, like I could live on just tomatoes and zucchinis and be happy. Um, and salt, you have to have salt. You literally would die without it. Uh, so here's a zinnia. Uh, I think this is Burnery's Giant. Burnery's? I don't know how to say that. Um, this, this is, uh, this is like a pretty classic zinnia. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the flowers this year. And, you know, I'm excited now that they're in. Okay, no, you guys, not in here, okay? Okay, can, please? There might be might be background noise. Um, as for favorite variety of zucchini, I haven't I haven't narrowed in on on a variety of zucchini that's my favorite yet. I keep I keep bouncing around. Um, I I do like Raven. If but the one thing too about zucchini is your favorite variety of zucchini is probably gonna have a lot to do with your growing area. I'm super dry. Um, but if, if you're humid, you might, you're going to have different like disease issues than, than I would here. And I think that like, in my opinion, most of them all taste the same. Um, so you, you want to pick the zucchini that is, is going to have the least amount of, of disease issues is, is kind of my, my thoughts on zucchini. Okay. You guys can, can you do it? Not in here, please. It's just, it's loud. Okay. Here, go. I made you guys a fire specifically so you could go sit by the fire. Just go, go turn the light on and then <laughs> it's gotten me. What? Don't cry. <laughs> no, you, you can do it yourself. It's gotten dark so the children have fallen, followed me into the only room with light on. Okay, sorry. Um, so here is another of uh, the perennial flowers that I was talking about yesterday. I ordered some perennial flowers in. Um, because I, I want to get some perennials going for the next few years. And I, I knew I was going to be doing all these seedlings anyways. So I figured maybe I'd give it a try to do, start some perennials for myself. 
Um, cause I don't, you know, like this was like three bucks. Um, whereas like to buy like a perennial plant would be five bucks. So I, I have a, I have a pile that's Cappuccino Rebecca. I don't know if I said the name. Here's a nasturtium. This is a whirly bird. And I think if I remember properly, yeah. Okay. So this one, because my, so my plan with the nasturtiums is I want to get the nasturtiums to be able to pick to put into a salad mix. I want to have like a, like a floral salad mix. Um, and, and, uh, this, so whirly bird, the way that this one is unique from other varieties is I need hands to show. So like they kind of turn in like nasturtiums just are this like mound. And then they're like, the leaves are these, they're like flat with like a stem on them. So they kind of sit up and then like they cover like all the leaves, make it into this like mound type thing. And then some of them start to be vining, but then it's like almost like a snake that's growing. Um, and then the flowers are just like, you know, in, in the mound, like, so you kind of have to like dig through to get the flowers. Um, but the whirly bird, the way that it's supposed to grow is like there's the mound of the flowers and then they actually sit up higher. So if you're going to pick, so yeah, so whirly bird is the one that people grow if they're growing it to pick the flowers for like salad mixes type thing because they sit up so you can, you can pick it a lot faster. You can have the two hands and just go along the top of the plant rather than be digging digging in so it, it it's the better one to grow for speed of harvest if that makes sense okay so here's a tomato totem this is uh like a small like uh cherry tomato that you grow in a pot um yeah so i got that not for me because i don't grow anything in pots because i don't water anything ever um but i know that some of the people coming will want that um, here's a winter squash. This is a Waltham butternut. Um, I, I love squash. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to, to grow. And I love to, for eating it too. So I, there was, there was a bunch of stuff that I'd never, never seen before with, uh, with the William Dam seeds. So I, I went a little crazy and I did buy, I did buy a lot of squash from them. And, and also because I am, I'm excited to try doing squash seedlings in the paper pots uh, for sale. I, I've never done seedlings. I always find that they like suffer too much from transplant shock. Um, but I think that if I'm doing them in the paper pots, you just plant the paper pot directly. So it, it should make it so they don't suffer from transplant shock in the same way that they do when you're actually like taking them out of the pot and everything. Um, so I feel with the paper pots, I feel confident that I'm going to be selling something that's going to grow well for people, um, as well as, as like will grow well for me too. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be doing like my squash in transplant form this year for the first time too. Uh, this is a basil sweet Danny lemon. And this I didn't buy to grow as a herb. I bought this to be a greenery for cut flowers. Um, I opened up another or showed another one yesterday. I have like a purple basil and, and the two of them, they're just something that I'm going to grow and try to get like leggy. So I have like I have filler for flower bouquets so that, you know, even though that is a basil that actually is in, it's in my, in my, uh, flower pile. Another thing that I have that's in my flower pile that I saw was on the, on the list of things that are back ordered is I'm, I'm buying cress and what they do f with cress as like a cut flower is they grow it and then it goes you know, like, cause cress is like full size in like 10 days. And so then it goes to seed like instantly and it creates this like spray of like little balls and, and it's supposed to be like a super pretty filler for cut flowers. So I have like, I have a big thing of cress to do in the, in the flower, flower bed too. Sorry, just hold on a second. <clears throat> I have my tea here. Okay. <laughs> We're like halfway through this, so I'm, I need to speed this up. Oh wait, Ponderosa, pink beefsteak. Um, yeah, when I was going through the tomatoes, because I know 
like most of the stuff that I'm going to want to grow are my wild boar farm stuff. But anything that kind of looked like a fun heirloom, I bought to be able to offer. Here's another one, Grimsmere's Pride. Um, another thing that I mostly do, I don't like, so like beef steaks like this, I don't like growing beef steaks because I find they take too long to ripen and I'm, I have no time for that. All, all I want to grow is cherry tomatoes because I want things to be ripe like instantly. So I, I don't tend to buy beef steaks ever for myself. So I did challenge myself a little bit to buy actual beef steak tomatoes for being able to sell for seedlings because I know last year everyone was kind of confused as to why I didn't have any like you know I had like 20 tomatoes that I was offering for sale but none of them were beef steaks and everyone's like where's the beef steaks? <laughs> um, parsley this green pearl so this is the curly parsley and then I also have the flat one and these are you know I'll have some of these as seedlings and then like some for the farm um, here's another Cosmo bright lights I think I got like four Cosmos and then I got about 10 different varieties of of uh, brain fart zinnias sorry zinnias and so basically like, Cosmos and zinnias are gonna be my end of summer like flowers from my flower garden and then I had a few things that would be earlier this is like one flower that I do love alyssum and then uh, carpet of snow the, these like they grow so easily and they're they're so cute like this this is something that uh, like I'll just spread everywhere I think this yeah this pack has like a stupid amount this is like 15,000 seeds and I usually buy like a pack like that every year and I just throw it anywhere and it, it makes a good it makes a good cover like you know it does make a good carpet of snow um and but I'll use that actually as like a mulch in areas like I'll I'll use it I'll mulch around like trees and things to keep other weeds from growing because it, it will grow dense enough to do like a weed barrier here's another Cosmo sensations mix kind of just classic Oh, okay. This one's super pretty. I forgot I got this. Uh, Nether Cosmo Snow Puff. And it's just white. And, like, I know a bunch of these are, are like, a mix of colors. And that's pretty much one of the only ones that I got that's only one color. Um, but the white is, is so, it's so classic. Yeah, I, with the alyssum, it, it really, it really does bring in pollinators, too. So it, it's a good one to like kind of have around the borders of a garden. Here's a winter squash, table queen, acorn squash. I like acorn squash. Um, usually the, I like to grow vining. I like to grow vining everything. Um, and, and I find that the acorn squash tend to only be bush. Um, and so like, I don't, I don't always like to grow something that takes up so much space but only produces me a couple of, of stuff. But acorn squash, the flavor is so nice. And also, I don't have to worry anymore. I have, I have two acres. I can grow. I can, I can waste space. Uh, okay, so this I'm super excited about. This is Candyland Tomato. And so what this is, like it's hard to tell on the pack, but this is a current tomato. And the current tomatoes are, they're like one centimeter tomatoes. Like they're these just tiny little, like little beads of tomatoes. And, and so this is like supposed to be like, it makes like a super long vine with these like tiny little things. And this was like another thing that I saw a bunch on, on Instagram and they were so cute. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to try one of these for myself. Um, you know, it's just so small. I mean, it, anything small is cute, but, and then tomatoes are amazing. So I, I'm excited to see, sometimes it, pictures, like it's hard to s get context. You know, it's like with the mouse melons, the like cucumber melons, they're like, they're so cute in person and they look cute in pictures too. Um, but yeah, with a tomato, cause like a, a like a small circle of a tomato, you know, that's, that's what any any cherry tomato looks like so I'm, I'm definitely interested to put eyes on that for real okay so here's a borage I got this um it it's I borage is pretty trendy like people like it it's it's a super weed you only need to grow this once and it'll self seed everywhere the seeds are massive like the seeds are like like the biggest seed I've ever seen they're like like huge huge seeds which makes sense why they like self seed everywhere 
Um, but you know, it's pretty and like you can eat the flowers and you know, it's a, it's a great, great one for pollinators. So I like, I think that's a good herb to have in the mix. <clears throat> um, here's a celosia. A, this is a tall, it's like a fan or a brain one. I thought that I, I thought I only ordered plume celosias that like they almost have like an amaranth type growing, but this one looks like it's more of a cluster one. Um, here's a, here's a, a zucchini, dunja is the name of the variety. Um, I have a ton of different, different uh, zucchinis from that I ordered last year because my plan last year was I was going to do every every year I usually do a seed trial for myself, which is like I pick one variety of like of plant and I'll I'll order like a ton of different things and then I'll grow one of each and I'll see what I like the best because um, I'm like I'm always trying to find what I like the best and what grows the best for me. Um, but uh, you know, I just, I never used to have the space to, to really be able to test a lot of things at, <coughs> sorry, at once. And last year was going to be my year to test zucchinis and, and other like summer squashes because last year my plan was we w were going to try to grow as much as we possibly could in, in our backyard. And zucchini I knew was going to be like a heavy producer and then we're going to be donating everything. This was like before we decided, like we thought about um, moving. So I bought like a ton of zucchinis. I bought every single zucchini that West Coast Seeds sold. Um, so this I bought because it was the only one that they didn't, that I didn't already have at that, um, that William Dam had. So I was like, oh, like throw it in. Like we'll do, we'll do the, the true test. We'll test every single one I can get my hands on. So, so it'll be in the mix. And I think that that's what the Dunja is the one that I think I've heard other like market gardeners like talking about. Yeah, so here's a plume, uh, Celosia. What's Pampas? Pampas plume? I think this, I think that, yeah, most of them are like, most of the flowers I bought, I bought as like a mix of colors just because I was mainly trying to figure out what I want to grow, not to like, you know, like I, like, I don't know anything about flowers, so I might as well get a mix. And then you have, like, the fun of the surprise. Here's a graffiti cauliflower. And so it's a purple cauliflower. This one was, like, a million dollars for these seeds, but, like, so cool. Like, I've seen pictures. This is another one I've seen pictures of a bunch, and they just, they look awesome. Okay, so here's something that I'm super excited about. This is Rapini and Sorrento. Sorrento's the name. And this is something that I'm planning on, like, this is like a crazy pack. This is like 13,000 seeds. Um, this I'm going to be growing for the farm. And, and that is, uh, this I'm excited about because I think it was, yeah, 35 days from seed. And it grows really well and fast in cool weather. And it, the Rapini is almost like a flat, it's like slightly better uh, flowering flat like broccoli so you cut it like you just cut the whole plant off and then you have like the stem with like a couple leaves and then like the small cluster like like a like a single single floret of, of broccoli but then it's it's not quite as sweet as broccoli it's a little bit more bitter a little bit more kale like um, this is something that you don't really see anywhere um, and it <sighs> It is kind of like a like a specialty thing, but so it it might be difficult for me to sell, um, but I think it's something that I can have out um, when when I early right because so my market starts June first and so I I'll have that for June first and I think that going to my farmers market and having that on the table if I can talk it up as it's like a bitter bitter broccoli um I'll be able to sell it that way and I won't have to compete with anyone who's growing broccoli because broccoli won't be ready by then so it'll be something that I can offer when there isn't a lot of things that I can offer yeah and whatever I've left like I'm I'm excited like because I like it I like rapini um and 
so yeah, if I'm not going to plant all of those seeds, I'm going to do a bed. I'm going to do like a 50 foot bed of it and see how it does. And if it does well, I can grow it again in, in the fall for the market. Um, but if not, like I, like I like it and I'll grow it for myself for the fall. Um, here's Bernie, uh, broccoli. I think I got like, I think I got an early broccoli and a late broccoli, but broccoli was like another one of those things like the cabbages and the cauliflowers. I just, I don't know a ton on it. So I didn't, I didn't go too crazy getting too many varieties other than the fact that I bought every single colored cauliflower there was. Um, because with those, I think, I think that people will be excited to see those. Here's a calendula Indian prince. This like, I wasn't, so to keep myself focused when I was buying flowers, <coughs> sorry guys, I only bought stuff that was, that was going to be something that could be a cut flower. So then I could like use the, like, I could use the excuse of being able to sell it at the farmer's market as an excuse to give attention to growing flowers because I'm not like naturally a super excited about flowers type person. Um, and that also was good because that gave like a context to like narrow in on what to grow because, you know, like flowers, there's more flowers than vegetables out there. So, you know, I just, I had no idea where to start. Um, but that specific one, it doesn't really get super tall, so it's not great for cut flowers, but the look of it was just like, it looked so cool. Oh. Hey, sorry about that. Ian, <laughs> Ian and I his Google account and he's at work right now and it looks like he just okay okay hopefully okay yeah Ian's Ian's trying to go on his cell phone basically and because he's in Alberta Google is very confused as to why as to why there's there's why I am currently in Kelowna signed into the Google account making a live video and then why why like the Google account is also in Alberta trying to do things online so I, I'm hoping it looks like it looks like it's it, it's going to be fine but yeah sorry about that it's just so much easier to keep everyone's stuff all together but but yes, I guess this is this is the issue. When you use your husband's Google account, it can it can cause issues. <clears throat> okay, um, cabbage, the Pilk, Bilko hybrid. This is a Napa cabbage, and I got a couple of these. And <clears throat> they like this one's super fast. This is fifty four days. That must be why I got this one. Um, but they, they usually don't like the heat of the summer. Um, but so I got a few that sounds like they might do. Okay. Uh, for, so for animals, I'm like, I'm too busy doing, cause we're, we're starting a farm business. Uh, so, so we're, we're going to have gardens, but we're also like the farm business, like the starting a vegetable farm is going to be a lot of attention. Um, but the structure of the farm business, cause Ian, Ian works out of town. And so we never know when Ian's going to be working. So we're building the farm business as like my job basically. So we are, <clears throat> we're making it so only I do the farm. It's set up so it can run while Ian's at work. So we're like making it to the scale of like one part-time job basically. So then if Ian's gone, I can do it while I still have the kids. Um, and so because of that, we have, uh, we've uh, like, like I, I knew I didn't have enough mental capacity to be able to organize all the farm business stuff as well as also organizing, organizing animals. But we, we do want to get chickens going this year. And so Ian's winter, winter like farm task has been, he's the one who's like doing the education for getting ready for having chickens. We're, we're going to get um, about like 50 uh, like production red laying hens 
and or or more like somewhere like we max out at 100 we're not allowed more than 100 um but we know we want at least 50 and like i'm sure we're gonna like we're gonna get chicks and i'm sure we're gonna kill some of them just because first of all they die and then second of all like i'm sure we'll have like an idiot mistake where we'll lose a couple um so we'll probably we'll probably buy like 60 or 70 chicks um so like we will have chickens happening in the spring um but the there's like a timeline for the for the farm so the the farm stuff has to happen first like ian ian will hopefully be back in in march from work and then help me prep up the farm and then he has to do some construction building stuff um and he's gonna build a chicken coop and then probably kind of like in april would be when we we'd get the chicks um and then and then we'll have them you know like young chickens running around doing their their little chicken thing uh until like late summer they probably wouldn't start laying because they take like i think six eight six months is how long the production reds take um but yeah so like i can't i can't really speak too much to stuff about chickens because i haven't really been been learning too much about chickens because like I just there there's not enough space in the brain computer to do to do all of that um but yeah so this would be the first time that we like are getting farm animals um but yeah like i like we've been around chickens before you know like we haven't like we don't know anyone who's like a poultry farmer um but i'm i'm not too intimidated by, by doing some chickens. Um, I know that we, we will have, like, the two issues, the reason why I've been, like, I know that it needs research, which is why he has to do that for us to get them, is we have two issues, which is, like, one, we're Canada, so we actually get winters, so we need a, we need a solution for them for cold weather. We can't just, like, have them in, like, one of those, like, tarp-style, like, chicken tractors that's just not gonna be a good enough winter solution um and then b it gets hot so <laughs> so we also need to figure out how to keep them alive in the heat so we kind of have like the double the double thing to it but like the we have like a space that should be more than enough to be able to work with them um and then the like the 50 laying hen is just like that is the that is the like short term, we eventually want to scale it down to just being like a family flock of like more heritage breed type stuff. Um, but we want a bunch of chickens to help us prep up some like some of the land that we're not going to be using for the next couple of years. So that's that's kind of the the very that's what I know about the chickens, which isn't very much. <laughs> but I'm sure Ian will come back and he'll have a bunch of like videos that he'll do about the chickens. Um, okay. I got a kohlrabi. This one was like crazy expensive. This is coursed. I like, I was willing to, like I like kohlrabi and it's cool and I think I could sell it on the farm and I think I can sell it as seedlings. Um, but kohlrabi likes cooler weather and here in Kelowna, we go from like cool to hot. Like we don't transition nicely from spring to summer. And so this one sounds like it, it's a variety that, sorry. Um, it's a variety that, that, uh, that might do well for us. So I was willing to, to give it a try. Um, here's another amaranth, uh, elephant's head. This one, super pretty, like the, like, the, like, super dark pink, and then the green. I really like amaranth. That's for the flowers. Um, Jack B. Little pumpkin. I got a couple. Okay, yeah, here. So I also got, uh, I got these, what's this called? Small Sorts Gourd. So these are kind of like when you go to the grocery store and you see those like little mini, like the little mini pumpkin and like the like mini gourds, those, those are that. And they're super cute. And, uh, and I think that there's something that would be like fun. Like I haven't really experimented with gourds before. Um, so I like, I think it'd be fun to, to give those a try. And then I might also be able to like sell gourds at the farmer's market. 
Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to try those. Here's another one of the perennials that I'm going to be trying. This is Prairie Sun, I think. Yeah. This, I bought one of these last year as, like, an actual, like, bedding plant. And this is, like, such a pretty Rebecca. Um, the center is this, like, green color and it has this, like, really nice var variation. Like, it fades out. It's it's really neat because usually the Rebeccas are, like, a, like you know, like, the black-eyed Susans. Yeah, what's up? What, aren't you playing the games? Yeah? Okay, so, nope. Sam's, do you want to sit with me? Well, I'm, I'm doing the video, I'm sorry. No. Here, go, go, did you get some of the fries? No. Did you get the crackers? If you want more crackers, Leo will get you more crackers. No. Um, okay, carrots. Here's a, a rainbow blend. This is, this is farm seed. This is like a, this has 10,000 seeds in it. I wanted to try to do some colored carrots. So I also showed, I got like the super black, purple, like all the way through um, carrots in, in a farm seed amount. Um, and I like, I, I just thought it'd be fun to have them on like the farm table, even if I can't produce like a ton of bunches of them. Um, and here's a purple kohlrabi. Yeah. I, I really like the kohlrabi. I personally like a broccoli stem more than I like a broccoli. And kohlrabi, to me, almost tastes just like broccoli stem. So I really like it. Oh, I got some more lettuces here. This is Lenny. Nice little frilly one. And then this this one's cool. This uh, Lolo. And it's like super purple and then they also have the picture down here. So it's purple on the outside, but then it like fades into a green. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I like I'll have to peel it though. I can't do the slices. Yeah. Okay, and then I have I have a pack choy. This is me king choy. And this is this is a smaller pack choy. And I got a bunch of this. I, I like I'm gonna try doing the choys the choice for the farmer's market as well oh. as like, I, I just really like them. No. Oh. I know that one. I have an issue. I have an issue with that one. Oh. Yeah. I need to keep that. You want to put it on the chair? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you have to give me a minute to peel it. Okay. Here's another zinnia. This is a sunshine mix. Um, and then here's a calendula. This one's called oopsie daisy. And it's, it's like a variegated variety. And that one I think got, gets a little bit taller. So that one I might be able to use as, as a cut flower. Um, but, but yeah, the, the calendula, they're, they're not super useful as, as cut flowers. Um, I do like, I do soap making and some like, you know, herb stuff. And the calendula is like awesome for like soaps and like skincare and things like that. So I, you know. Even if I can't sell them as cut flowers, I'm, I'm happy to have them in the garden just for me to pick to have. Okay, there you go. Okay, you take it. Okay, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm saving the most exciting part till the end because the very bottom of this box has all the, the farm seed. And I just, I love when things are like, when it's this many seeds. Like, that's, when it's no longer by seed number that they sell it, but by weight, that's, that's exciting for me. That's, like, worth starting a farm, just so you can buy seeds like that. Oh, yeah, here's another Celosia. I don't know. I don't remember buying this. This is Chief Mix Celosia. It's pretty, but... I, I thought I only bought, I thought I only bought the plume celosias. My mom made fun of me about this one. I bought a massive pack of chives. She's like, why did you buy chives? If you want chives, I have chives for you. This is like 15,000 chive seeds. But my plan with this is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some as seedlings and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna sprinkle them everywhere. Cause all my chives died. Like they're supposed to like, chives are supposed to last forever. But <laughs> somehow I like killed off my chives like in before they could self seed again. And like, th that's another one that I'd like to get some established for the farmer's market, bringing like a cluster of chives. That's something that 
that I definitely think people would like. Here's a winter squash, blue ballet. I think that this is like a Hubbard style. Yeah, I don't like it looks it looks super pretty. I, I've always had to be super strict with myself as to what as to what squash I've grown. Here, let's see. I'm gonna dig through and find a squash. Yeah, because I've I've been so limited in in space, I've had to had to be cautious about what what I pick because I only get to grow like four or five of them. Um, but if if I can get the space like ready this year, I can grow as many squash as I want. So I I definitely I I had fun picking stuff. This is one of my favorite types of winter squash. This is a kabucha style. This is like a Japanese pumpkin. When you go to, if you ever like go for Japanese food and you get tempura, there's always like that half moon orange sweet tempura piece. Um, and this is like those squash and the flavor is just like really, really good. They're like, if, if you've never like seen them before, they're this like warty green and stripy um, skin but then the meat is almost like a like a sugar pumpkin but then it's like not stringy at all I find sometimes like uh, pumpkins can be a little bit stringy whereas this is like a super uh, rich and, and dense the the meat on it is really good and I also find it's one of my longest keepers so basically for me it like it wins on every single every single point you'd ever want like a squash to, to win on so those are my favorite and anytime I can find new varieties of the kabusha squash I, I try them because I'm, I'm always looking for which one will be the best because you, you don't really see them I or I don't see them sold super often um, another winter squash sunshine hybrid I don't remember what this is this might be a kabucha one too with an orange flesh Like I said, I bought so much stuff that it's hard for me to remember the thought process behind every single one that I threw into the cart. Um, and then finally, Summer Squash Sunburst. I've talked about this already a bunch. Um, this is a patty pan and it's awesome. Like the flavor on it's super good. It almost has like a like a butteriness to the to it. Um, it's I find it's quite different from a zucchini and like usually you pick them like small you get them as small as possible but if you forget them they get like massive it's you know it's it's like a zucchini where they just you know they get oversized in half a day but I, I still like them even when they get like that I find the skin still stays fairly thin and then I'll just seed it the way that I would like with an oversized zucchini but I find that even though those overgrown are are good too so which is always good. Okay, a couple more cucumbers. Fanfare Hybrid. Okay, so I got this because it's a, it's like a dwarf variety. Because I have, I have a whole selection of cucumbers left over from last year that I got because I was also going to be trying to do a bunch of cucumbers. So I didn't buy too many. Um, but I did pick, I don't, I didn't have any pickling cucumbers. So I picked up a few of those and then I must have picked that up just to have something a lot of the people that I anticipate are gonna be buying seedlings off of me are gonna want stuff that's a little bit more compact they're gonna be like you know home gardeners that are limited a little bit more in space so that's something that might appeal to them and then this is diva um yeah this like this super short like sorry <laughs> I'm reading the packet uh diva it says 52 days on this one which it seems like super short for uh for a cucumber so and then the aas winner those are always really good yeah i'm excited about this <laughs> i'm i'm gonna have so many reasons for ian to build me like eight greenhouses with all these tomatoes and all these uh and all these um all these cucumbers and things that i could grow in them Okay, last flower, Dianthus. And then this is Super Duplex Mix. I think that this was, like, I think it was saying that the Dianthus was, like, gonna still be good for me for, like, having some sort of drought tolerance. Um, here's a Mustard Green, Ms. America. This is super pretty. 
I love mustard greens. I love like the spiciness to them. Um, and this is farm seed. This is like this I bought so that I could do I could do a couple beds of of this. Um, when I went to make my farm plan, I I bought like a ton of stuff before I actually made my farm plan. So there's some stuff that I've kind of now found out I don't necessarily have space for. And I think that's one of them. Um, but it, it won't go bad. I'll use it next year and I'll, I'll use it for myself too. Uh, and then how about this? Super funky. Uh, these are watermelon radishes where the, like, the outside is like green and white and then the inside is red. I've, I've seen these online, but I've never actually seen these in person. And I hear that the flavor is a little bit different too. And it, doesn't have quite, it almost has a little bit more sweetness to it. Um, yeah, so I'm, ex I'm excited to try that. And here's another one for, that I wouldn't mind doing a few for the farm. This is Mammoth Basil. It's like super big. Um, I, I personally like just like a, the normal basil that I do is, do you know VC, I think is how you say it? Um, and I like, I really like the flavor. I really like the growth on it. It's just kind of like classic, classic basil. I have like a mountain of the seeds already because I like I bought like, you know, more than enough last year. Um, but I know that people like the oversized basil. So I, I bought that because I, but yeah, I've, I've done them before and haven't had luck. But I, you know, I keep a couple, throw them in the greenhouse and see how they do. Okay, and then this one is uh, Desiree uh, Snow Pea. And this is a purple pea. And so there's a backstory on this. The thing that I was the most excited to grow last year was a purple pea, like after I saw it everywhere on Instagram. And so I got the purple pea that they had. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> um, like I always say everything wrong. Um, yeah, so purple peas. So I bought the one they had at West Coast Seeds and I grew it and it looked amazing and it had these super pretty flowers and then I went to eat it and it was like disgusting. It was like, like even my kids were like, we're not gonna eat that, it's gross. And, and so I was like, I was like, yeah, it looks cool, but like, I'm not gonna grow something just cause it looks cool. It has to be, it has to be good. And I had other people that I'd heard online who obviously got bitten by the purple pea bug who were saying the same thing that they their purple peas weren't weren't good they didn't want to eat them um but it was a shelling pea and so so this purple pea here is a snow pea um so it's it's a different pea than what I grew last time and so maybe that maybe the sh purple shelling peas are gross and then maybe this one's good so I don't know. I'm I'm willing to give it another go, but if that sucks, I'm not. That's it. That's my last. That's my last go on purple peas. Okay, and then we have my farm seeds, and then I'm done. Okay, here's a. So this is an Asian green. This is Toy Sim. I think is how you say it. We have a uh, hundred grams of this. Uh, so what this is is this is almost like this is like. This is like the Asian green version of the Rapini. It's almost, and it's it's similar. It's like a mini, mini Guy Lan. Basically, I couldn't find Guy Lan, like the full size Guy Lan anywhere, um, which might be like, maybe it's cause it just doesn't grow well in Canada. But this I've grown like a million times and I love it. It's my favorite. Um, and and yeah, so I'm, I'm, more, I'm more than happy to eat a hundred grams of this on my own, but that I did, I bought that as farm seed. Um, and so we'll see. Oh, here, so here's my cilantro. This is Calypso. And this one is supposed to be, um, a, like heat, a little bit more heat tolerant. Cilantro, like instantly bolts, like around here. It's, it can be really tricky to grow it. Um, sorry. Just, um yeah. So this is the one that was recommended by Kurt Stone. So that's the one that I bought. <laughs> um, and, and this is, this is farm seed. And yeah, this, this obviously is a lot. This is like 10,000, uh, cilantro, but cilantro isn't necessarily a cut and come again. So this is like, you know, like every single bundle of cilantro that I bring to the farmer's market to sell is going to be like the equivalent of like, you know, a couple plants. So 
Like, like I'm, I'm going to need a lot. This, this is the amount of cilantro that I need. Um, another thing, too, about, like, some of these farm seeds, like, they feel, to me, they feel crazy because this is my first year farming. Um, but I have, now that I've, like, kind of looked at some seed density stuff, um, I'm going to have to rebuy. Like, I'm going to run out of seeds on a lot of my farm seeds. It, you, like, the, for the high intensity, like, stuff that you grow, where it's like, like here, here's an example. This is Easter egg radish. Um, you know, this, this is a hundred grams, but this would probably only plant me a couple, um, 50 foot beds and, you know, like here, 5,000 seeds, right? Yeah. I don't, I personally don't like cilantro. I'm, I'm just gonna, I know other people like cilantro, so I'll make money on it. <laughs> and, but yeah, I usually, I usually don't grow it. Um, but yeah, so, so this feels like a lot, but when you buy like a bundle of radishes, like at the, at the store, right? It's like, you know, like it's a cluster of radishes and every single one of those is just like one unit, one unit of, of radish. So, you know, it's like, I need 20 seeds. Like, let's say the germination stuff happens. Like I need 20 seeds to get 10 radishes and 10 radishes are one bundle. And if I want 50 bundles to bring to the farmer's market, you know, that now we're up into like, what, that's like a thousand, that's a thousand seeds. Um, so 5,000 seeds is only enough for five, five markets without even having me then eating some of it. Um, so when, once you're doing this, yeah, it, it felt crazy, you know, it feels crazy to buy a hundred grams of, of a radish. Cause I personally can't eat 5,000 radishes. Um, but it, this, it like, even for me with the small amount of the small farm that I'm doing with the small amount of customers that I'm hoping to be serving, um, that the seed goes fast, the seed goes very fast. So that's, you know, that's, that's definitely one thing that I've kind of been surprised when I've gone to actually make like really detailed crop plan things is like there's a like there's a bunch of stuff that I bought that I'm like I'm not going to be able to have space for just because I ran out of space so quickly, um, but but yeah but I'm also like I I underbought even though it felt like I bought too much. Um, I know like I know with radishes if if they're too tight they won't create a root so um, like if you're having issue like the seed density needs to you know they need they need space. So um, I have seen people overseed stuff like that and then get, get no roots, just get radish greens. Um, but I will say I love radish greens. Radish greens are one of my favorite spring greens. So if, if all you get is radish greens, uh, give, them, give them a try because they're really good, especially if you pick them when like they're just baby ones. If they get like super big, they start to get a little like fuzzy and the texture isn't as nice, but, but I, love, I love the radish greens. Uh, so here's a, like a salad mix, Bon Vivant salad mix. <clears throat> yeah. And so the main salad that I'm going to be growing in, in the farm is the Salanova, which is like the one that all the, all the market gardeners grow. Um, but, uh, I bought some salad mix to give as a try. Okay. And this is hot weather lettuce. So this is like salad mix that I'd be able to grow in the heat of the summer. Um, I like, I will in, in the peak of the summer, I'll have more space, like the fall and the spring, the, my, my farm, my farmers, my farm is going to be really tight. Um, but come summer, I'll have some space and yeah, so it, I wouldn't mind doing some experiments cause I don't, I don't have a ton of experience growing like a lot of greens. Just because, like, I don't eat a lot of lettuce. But, yeah, so I, I think I will get to experiment with that. Um, one thing I, like, I talked about, too. Yeah, we do have snow on the ground. We have, like, a foot of snow. <laughs> As I talk about my farm. <laughs> um, yeah, one one thing that that I, I talked on Instagram about doing and I like, I kind of was like, nah, I don't know. Um, but I, I'm, I like, I might give it a try is like, I'm going to order a couple like of these little mini envelopes. I have to do an order 
with to get like bags and stuff to, for my for like my market stand and so I found like a cheap source for like little mini like so I could do like seed envelopes um yeah, but so so I was thinking maybe when I have people coming to buy the seedlings, maybe there's a chance that, you know, with a lot of this stuff that it doesn't really make sense to do seedlings for to sell. Uh, like, you know, like carrots or radishes or beets. Like, you know, like I have, like I obviously, like I can share some radishes for a little bit of money. Um, you know, if I, if I had these envelopes, if people are interested, I could maybe sell a little bit of my seed. Um, and then it's just, you know, something else for people to buy. Um, so yeah, so for like, like stuff like this, like, especially now that like, I, I know I don't necessarily, like, I don't necessarily need a hundred thousand salad mix seeds. Um, you know, like me, like maybe I can still, there's people probably still would find value in this and then it, it won't be completely gone to, gone to waste. Yeah, I, like with the winter stuff, um, like I know for us, it, the last few years, it's been it's been kind of like what it's been here, which is it's really nice. Like winter doesn't kind of hit like until end of January, and then the winter has been continuing kind of into the beginning of March. Whereas normally March would be like nice, nice and warm, and and like really getting into spring for us. Um, but yeah, like I was hoping beginning of March we'd we'd be good to go, but it's definitely seeming like I'm I'm not gonna be able to like be out in the yard at all until mid March. The one nice thing about where I am though, because I know like one of the things that really blocks everyone up for getting going early, um, is how wet everything is and Kelowna's so dry that like you know, this snow will melt and like instantly just like the ground will be dry as soon as the snow melts. So like, I'm, I'm not, I feel, I, I feel for you guys who have snow on the ground still, and then you have to not only wait for the snow to melt, but then also like time for the snow to dry out, the snow melt to dry out. Yeah, I know I've been seeing some crazy stuff like over on the east. Like, the, I mean, the weather this year, just in general, everywhere has been pretty scary. Um, okay, peas. So I bought a ton of peas, thinking that maybe I'd grow peas for the farm, but I'm not. It's like, it's way, it's way too much, like, space. And then peas, too, like, they're just a lot of labor to be able to, like, get them to market. So, but, I, so I have them now. I, like, I'll plant some of these. Worst case scenario, I can do like, I can do pea, pea shoots for uh, us. Um, but yeah, so this, this is a shelling pea. This is strike. I think I, if I was going to do some, I'd maybe do some of this because my kids really like, my kids really like a shelling pea. Um, so I'd maybe plant a bed of this in, in like, in the actual yard. So the kids could always have like, you know, like the kids will have strawberries and they'll have tomatoes. Like, I'm 100% doing that in, in our yard area that's, like, fenced. So we can, like, keep them trapped in there and keep them safe and away from the farm and other dangerous things that are going on. Um, but, yeah, the more things I have for them to eat unsupervised, the the more likely they are to stay where I want them to be. So if, if I have a bed of peas, you know, that, that'll get me an hour <laughs> at some point. That'll buy me time. Um, and then I bought some snow peas. And this is the snow pea that I usually like. Uh, Oregon sugar. This one I... I like it. I bought a million. Obviously I was thinking that I'd grow that for the farm, but I'm not going to. So now I have a million. Yeah, definitely I could do it on the fence. Um, like, I'm, I'm going to use the chain link fence. I'm, go I'm gonna grow stuff up there. And then I think... Like, I think, because I want to do a bunch of pole beans, and I think we're going to do, like, a, um, a cattle panel tunnel, like, those arches. I think we're going to do, like, an entire bed with an arch. Um, just, like, there, there's definitely, there's, like, I haven't even really talked too much about what we want to do for our home garden this year, because I don't have one yet. Basically, what I turned into, the vegetable garden that, like, I, I still have stuff in that I'm going to be, 
Like I, I have it so spinach will be in there for like once once the snow melts off, the spinach will start to grow. And we'll have like a bunch of spinach to eat all spring. Um, and like that's where I've been getting like the turnips and like all the other random things that I've gotten all winter. But that garden is gonna be my flower garden. And so um like like I'm gonna lose that. Everything everything that I'm going to be planting home garden stuff into needs to be like made have to prioritize the farm like prior the farm has to be the the number one priority this year sorry someone's phoning me <laughs> um, um yeah the farm has to be the number one priority this year so i need like i can't make plans for what i'm gonna do for my home garden until i i know that i have enough time to make the farm and then make the home garden um so yeah i, I don't want to get too excited about home garden ideas so, so I don't have to be disappointed when, if I, if I have to abandon them. Uh, so here's a beet that I got. This is the Chicoga. Like, I'm sure you can kind of see in the picture. I'll try to hold it as still there as possible. But it's like the, the one with the rings inside of it. Um, I showed it yesterday. This is my absolute favorite beet. This is Cylindra. This is my number one favorite beet. And I'm excited to bring that to the market. Um, I don't. This I don't like. This isn't one of my favorite beets to grow, but it looks cool. So if if I have like a couple bundles of this, I can like have a beet that's sliced open to show off at the at the farmer's market and maybe someone will come over to my table because of it. That's like my thought behind that one. I also ordered uh, Red Ace. That's the other beet that that I got. Um, and and it is it's it's on back order, so it's not in there. Um, as for gardening, I've been, I've been gardening for, I've been, ooh, some good stuff in here. <laughs> ooh, Christmas, bottom of the stocking. Um, I've been gardening for, <coughs> sorry, I've been gardening for 15 years. Um, we just moved to the property that we're on. I went from being in like an urban lot where we had a 2,000 square foot garden and our focus was growing as much as we could in that space to we just moved to a farm property. And so what we're working on, what, sorry. I know Bo's here, I know. What we're working on this year is um, starting farming. So I like, I have experience gardening. I don't have experience farming. And and so like, I, I talk all the time about not knowing what I'm doing because um, the farming's totally different. Like your skill set, um, I'm in Kelowna. Um, but the, the, okay, I should, I should, I'm in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, because most people don't know where that is. But if you know, if you know who Curtis Stone, the urban, urban farmer is, I, I live where he lives. Um, yeah, but yeah, so there, I, there's a huge difference between farming and gardening. So in, in the same way that like, so here I have another pea here. And uh, so this is sugar sprint and this is a snap pea. Um, to, to plant peas and to have peas in the garden makes a ton of sense. They're not a lot of work, they're super easy. You can plant them in super early and get them out to do an easy succession. Like the peas in the garden make a huge amount of sense, um, but peas as a farmer don't necessarily make as much sense because they are a lot of work to pick. So even though it's simple enough to grow them, it, it isn't because you have to trellis first of all. So that means to grow them, you have to like build a trellis system, which you have to set up and then take down if you're gonna grow something else there. And then to go and to, and to pick it, um, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work and, and they can, you'd have to pick it daily with, with uh, peas, they don't hold, right? They go from being the perfect size to, to too big very quickly. So because of that, they're not a, they're not an easy thing to farm. Um, so there's there's lots of things like that where I don't actually know what what I can do and what I can't do because I've never tried to farm, and and a lot of the knowledge that I have as as a home gardener. 
Um, I don't I don't want to get cocky just because I feel like I'm a good like I'm I I, get, I feel like I can give advice as a home gardener. Um, but I feel like if I go into farming, thinking that having a lot of knowledge as a home gardener is gonna help me, I'm I'm going to be unhappy <laughs> and surprised at how little it helps me. So I'd I'd rather go go into it go into it expecting the worst. <laughs> Um, I got some, some spinach, so I got, uh, Reflect. The spinach that I was gonna buy, like the one that, that Kurt usually buys, I think it's Space is the name of it. Cause it, so spinach is for the farm. Um, yeah, the one I was gonna buy, they, they had a crop failure on it. So I couldn't get it. So I had to pick something else. Um... So this is the one that I think I got for the shoulder season, which is, yeah, so this one's fast, 42 days, um, and then what you want for when it's cool, but the issue with spinach is, uh, is it bolts, it hates the hot weather, which we have, and so this imperial green I bought to do for in the heat takes a little bit longer to grow, um, but it should... Yeah, and then this, it's saying that this is an Asian spinach, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't 100% remember, but I think that's what my thinking on that was. Okay, and then I have dill. I have a big massive pack of this. I have 50,000 seeds of this, and that is because the dill is both... Um, it's both one that I'm going to do for, for bringing to the market. This, like, I, I forgot about it when I was listing off, like, basil, like, cilantro, parsley. Dill, though, is also, also one of the ones that I'm, I'm going to be bringing as a herb to the farmer's market. But dill also is something that I'm going to be planting into my flower bed because uh, it, dill very quickly goes to seed. And so this the flower heads, like the seed heads on it, you know, they're almost like a, like an ami, like a, like a Queen Anne's lace uh, type one. But I think you can get them even faster. I think the Queen Anne's lace like is kind of like a summer to late summer, whereas like the dill early summer you can already get like seed heads and then they're they're nice and fragrant to have in bouquets so that's that's the story behind that one and then i have some some uh i bought two of the same thing maybe i don't remember ordering this <laughs> this is obviously and the fact that there's two okay so this this is a a large gray striped sunflower the fact that there's two of this means that that i obviously grew this like i i put this on on the i put this on the list because i wanted to grow it and and then i then I was like, oh, I forgot to, I, no, I, I totally bought this. I'm just an idiot. Um, I, yeah, I put this on the list because I wanted to grow this. And then when I went to order my seeds, I thought I'd forgotten to put this on the list. And so I, I added another one into the cart um, without realizing it because I bought so many things. Uh, so this, this is like the big, this is, this is the like mammoth uh, sunflower type thing. Um, yeah, it, okay, it says on the back, also known as mammoth. Yeah, so this, this is mammoth sunflowers. So they get massive. These are the ones that get super, super big. And, and these are actually, like, you can, you can do this as an eating sunflower. Um, I mentioned it at the, at the very beginning, but I'm assuming anyone who's still here was most definitely not here two hours ago. Um, the, there's a handful of things that I don't have yet. They're on back order. They're, they're going to be coming, like, next month. And one of the things, which was the most expensive thing that I bought, is I bought, like, a, a sack, like, a massive bag, like, a, a couple, like, tens of thousands of a sunflower that is a multi-branching, smaller head that you can use as a cut flower. And the plan is the sunflowers, I want to have chickens in an area and then move them, move them out and then plant sunflowers in. And then the sunflowers I can cut and I can bring them in to sell at the farmer's market. Just, you know, have buckets and buckets of sunflowers. 
which will look pretty and be super easy to do. Um, <clears throat> and then they'll produce a ton of mass, which I'll be able to like put into the area to try to help like revitalize the area. And then the root balls will help us break up the soil and get, get a bunch of soil activity back in there. And then anything that I can't pick to sell as flowers, I'll be able to feed back to the chickens. Um, but because they're smaller, they're not going to be anything that's good for saving for seed heads. That's what these are. The, the plan on these is, because these won't really produce, like, you can't use these as flower heads, because these are, like, the ones that get, like, huge. Um, and they won't produce flowers until, like, way later in the season. But these I, like, these I can take, and, and I can cut the heads off, and I can throw them in the barn and dry them, and then I can use them as supplemental chicken feed after my smaller sunflowers are, are finished. This is, this is stuff that, so basically the plan with the sunflowers is I'm going to use them for, I'm going to use them like basically just as a cover crop. Sunflowers are going to be one of our, our main, main cover crops to go along with the chickens for next year. Um, and I picked it because I want it to be also useful for going back to the chickens. Basically, the, the sunflowers will take the chicken poop as nutrients, make seeds that'll feed to the chickens to make more chicken poop, and we'll, it will keep the system a little bit more closed, and, and it'll, you know, keep it going. Because there's, there's going to be, there's going to be a few areas, um... Yeah. The, yeah, so keeping birds out of them, um, in the past, because I've, no. I've grown some, like, I've never planted sunflowers. This will be the first time in my life I plant sunflowers. Um, but birds have brought sunflowers into my garden, and then I've allowed them to grow to keep birds in my garden, because I find having birds in the garden add to, like, a good, um, good hap, like, just good pest predator cycles. Um, so even though the birds are eating my sunflowers, I, I'm not growing sunflowers for sunflower seeds. Um, but if I have tried to get a few heads to get them as sunflower seeds, uh, what I've done is I've picked them super early and I've taken them inside away from the sunflower, uh, away from where the birds can get them and let them dry that way. And, and then I can get the seeds without, without like all the chickadees eating them up. Um, so it'll be the same thing for this. Um, but another thing is like one of the things that I've been super, super kind of like uncomfortable about in where we're living right now, because the, like, we just moved to this farm area, like about six months ago, seven, I think I'm, we're seven months now. Um, but they're like, it's like, it's like a wasteland here going from like being like, you know, I was like downtown in our city. And, you know, I had this vegetable garden and it was like full of life. Like I made this video last spring that, that the kids found who are watching and it was, my crocuses bloomed and they were just covered in bees. And I took this video of, of it because there's so many different bees. There was about a diff, like 12 different types of bees just all going crazy. Like from like the big massive bumblebees down to like tiny, tiny little like, they were, like, almost hard to see these little black, shiny bees. Um, and, you know, like, it, it was cool to see. Um, but then coming to this farm area, like, a little bit away from the, like, the city and everything, like, in a space where, like, I thought coming here, there was going to be a lot more life, a lot more things going on, you know, like in, in the city, like I thought the city was preventing, preventing like animals and birds and bugs and everything from, from having like a place that they could be. But coming out here, there's, there's nothing. There's, there's some hawks and, and there's like some, some bigger birds. Like I've seen crows here and there. Um, but I mean, we're, we're beside a cherry orchard and like, there's no birds in the cherry orchards. <laughs> like there's, there's nothing eating the cherries. Like no birds were in, were in our cherry trees. Um, it's, you know, there, there's no, 
because the way like there most of the agriculture around us is traditional agriculture so like tons of chemicals and and they're obviously like killing killing birds because the birds get into the cherry trees and um and they the spray just kills off everything there's like there's no habitat because you know like it's just farm fields right like where where are the things supposed to go when the trees are getting sprayed so often that nothing can live in them and then everything else is just you know mowed and stays stays like you know cleaned up um yeah so they're they're really there isn't much <laughs> going on here so i'm i'm more than happy to to have birds in my sunflowers i'm i'm more than happy to actually leave leave sunflowers out there for the winter um you know even though it means that like i'll maybe have to buy a little bit more feed for my chickens over the winter um if it means that we start building some habitat um you know like i talked about getting getting the perennials in and one of like our long-term plans is is we want to get we want to get perennial like mixed perennial systems like everywhere in the property like we want to we want to definitely have perennial beds in between like chunks of rows and um and to be able to create some more habitat um i found i found a praying mantis here in the summer that that was that was exciting for me because it meant meant there's somewhere that some of these things are living um but yeah, I'm, fingers crossed, build it and they will come. Hopefully if I can create some some more natural conditions for for those, for the stuff, maybe I'll be able to, to get them and then I'll, I'll start being able to utilize them. Um, uh, we, like, it, it's going to be difficult, though, for the, you know, the five-year plan, right? And that building anything in this year to to get like diversity in is is probably not going to be happening just because like we need buffers from the spray from from the cherry orchard beside us like we need you know we need we need to be bringing the stuff in it's it's definitely it's going to be long term not long term plan but yeah I'm I'm worried about the birds but but more so I'm worried about the fact the birds aren't here but hopefully hopefully we can fix that and then my neighbor will be really annoyed at me because he'll have birds in his cherry trees but it'll it'll be be for the best <laughs> okay so that's all my seeds guys i i don't know if you guys have any more questions i know this is like ridiculous like we're at two hours here now and i did do an hour yesterday i i had been joking that it was going to take me four hours to do the unboxing um but apparently, apparently it, w it wasn't a joke. Um, Sam, who I'm sure you guys can hear because he's playing no, right here. No. He's, he's brought all his toys over. Uh, he's, he's two and a half and then my daughter is, is four and a half. They're both of the age to get trained to help sometime in the future. <laughs> they're, they're not going to be, they're not going to be farmers yet, but, but maybe we can, maybe we can get that. Uh, so I bought, I bought a Snapdragon. I forget the name of it. I think, yeah, I, I can't remember, but I bought Snapdragons to have for, I'm doing like a flower garden and, and everything is, uh, is going to be stuff that hopefully can be, will be, uh, for cut flowers. Um, and yeah, I mean, tending it, like, yeah, it's fine to talk. If I, I can talk the talk, can I walk the walk? <laughs> and that, that's part of the reason why the farm plan, we're only going to have a 4,000 square foot farm for the first year, um, which is, I think is going to be a good place to start. Um, and then the flower bed is going to be a thousand square feet. And like, if I, if I can't keep up with it, it just, it gets left. Nothing happens with it. And then that's the same plan with, with the home garden. If, if we're too busy with the farm, then no home garden happens. Like, we'll obviously be able to eat out of the farm. Um, I'm not, like, there's lots of stuff that I want to grow. Um, and, you know, I, like, I, I hope to have the time for it. But, 
you know, it's it, it's hard to say. I'm thinking that my 4,000 square foot farm will take about 30 hours a week, um, which I like I can do. Like that's doable for me by myself. <coughs> like I can get that many hours outside of like the kids. Like they'll, they'll give me that much time a week. Um, if Ian's like home and able to help, um, he will, you know, then we'll have lots of time and then we'll, then I will, you know, only need to do 20 hours on the farm, which will give me, you know, then another 20 hours to be able to have, have a family garden, which will be more than enough for me able to grow, uh, what I want to grow. Um, you know, like, as I said, I've been growing for 15 years, so I, like, I'm pretty confident in my gardening time management. Um, we have, we have irrigation, which saves hours and... And then we also, like, we use mulch to, to keep weeds down. So, like, we have systems to keep things efficient. Um, yeah, and so uh, farm plan. So for the last, like, I have I have the farm plan. I know what I'm doing. Like, I know what <coughs> when I need to do stuff. I'm, like, super, I'm, I'm super organized on it. Yeah, I'm definitely planting a grazing garden for the kids because as many hours as it's going to take to have a grazing garden, it will more than make up for it in hours that I save in uh, in lack of child care due to the garden doing child care for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so farm plan. I have this farm plan and I've been working on a farm plan video and it's like, it's like nightmare video I like I filmed it and then I like I went to edit it and my video was so boring that my camera turned off on me <laughs> so I only have like a half of the video um and I've been I've been trying to put it together and I know that there's some of you no, that my, are my, interested my, my, my. oh thank you yeah. thanks I almost forgot it yeah. I know that there's like a handful of you guys that are interested and like yeah. would watch a half an hour farm plan video yeah. And like, and like you provide value. Um, it's just, it's, I've, I've been trying to figure out a way to make it interesting. Like, and it's, it's just, it's hard to tell if it's interesting or not. So I've, I've been struggling to make a video to share the farm plan. But yeah, I have like, I have things like pretty organized, like down to like my planting schedules. Um, and like dates and I have like I have things marked off and I know what I'm going to be growing and everything like it, it is all organized um and like and I do feel like it's it, it should flow fairly smoothly um you know other than if like the ground stays frozen until like end of March then that'll mess up my farm plan but I mean that'll mess up everyone else's farm plan so then I'll still be winning at the farmer's market because June 1st will come and I'll actually have something and other people might not so but but yeah, so I have it. I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to release it at some point and um, hopefully it, I won't bore everyone and then you will all leave me. At least there will be at least a couple people who will watch it. Um, but yeah, I like, I have that probably coming up next week. Um, I, I started a video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like what does it really matter? <laughs> Um, I started a video about how to, um, like I, the last couple days, I, I have a video on how to do paper pots that I, that I have that I'm, I'm hoping to finish up the editing on that tonight. So I have that coming, but yeah, I mean this, I mean, this video is super boring. <laughs> no, no, like I, I love it cause no, I love talking no. about seeds. Like I could no, literally, no, no. I could like, I could have a live stream that goes like 16 hours a day. That's just me sitting there talking. I, I know I don't need it plugged in. Just me talking seeds. I'd be, I'd be more than happy to just talk gardening stuff. No, 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 no. Uh, all day, every day. Um, but yeah, this is this, the fact that I have the seeds in, like I did this, I did this as a live video just cause like, I'm excited about my seeds. So I, I wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, the fact that I have this means that it's go time, like for me, which, which makes the, you know, what I'm going to be doing with the channel, it makes the, the channel flow a bit, bit a bit better. Um, one of my issues with doing the farm plan video, um, the way that I've kind of been structuring it is it's how I went about making my farm plan because yeah, totally Christmas morning. Um, 
better than Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, like how I, I the farm plan. I don't feel like I necessarily need to make a two hour video about the farm plan because literally like this is like 2019's like video content from us is going to be the farm plan. My like what we're going to be doing on the channel here is literally we're going to be showing you like everything that we're doing. Um, you know, kind of like I was just saying, yeah. my number one focus needs to be on the farm. If I don't have the time, I'm not going to have a home garden. So um, going forward, you know, the focus of the videos is like it's going to be about us building a farm. You know, like I like I. I want to make some education, somewhat educational <laughs> videos, because um, I like I find that those are useful and based on um, views and stuff. Like I find, like I know that people come to them even after I've made them. Um, but like what what we really do kind of want to do with the channel here, like what our whole plan was with making making the YouTube channel was it it's more about the life that we're building than how to like how to build the life um you know i like i personally think some of the best videos are like us going out there and just like totally failing i think those ones are hilarious like you know i i, I think it's so funny for us to like go out there and like have the video like today we're gonna like do this it's gonna be awesome and then we get out there and we're like you know we're idiots like like i know like i know we're a bunch of idiots i know we don't know what we're doing um but i like yeah, like i i think that's fun right like i like i think it's fun to show us going out like going out there with these plans and then and then it not then it not working out so like I think I think the I think the farm videos that are going to be coming this summer are like are going to be fun videos both to make and and hopefully to watch you know the, the the goal with the videos other than live videos like I feel like I'm allowed to do whatever I want on those but the goal is to make videos that like are are fun to watch um you know and like I'm I'm super excited I'm super excited to start a farm I'm super excited to you know, like one one video I'm looking forward to making is July second. July second, I'm gonna make a video, and it's gonna be this is what I this is what Ian and I did in in a year. It's gonna be like this is everything that we were able to achieve in a year, and and you know, like that's I'm gonna feel like super proud to go and make that video because like I know that I did the like the one year, like, the, my, like, 2019, like, or, like, yeah, like, around New Year's, I did the, this is what we did in 2018, and, like, like, I was super proud to put all that together, and to be able to say, like, wow, like, you know, it made me sit back and, and say, like, wow, like, holy, like, we, like, we, like, we worked hard, and, and not only the, like, did we work hard, but like, we actually like, we achieved like a crazy amount of stuff, right? Like, I, like, I felt like, I feel really good looking back at like what we did in a year. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to, to be able to look back at our hard work of a year on our property and, and to be able to be like this, you know, like, even though like every day we messed up and like, even though like there, we don't know what we're doing and, and there's so much to learn, you know, like, after a year, we'll be able to say like, but look how much we learned and look how much we did. And you know, like that, that's the fun for me of these, of these videos. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what I, that's what I try to do. That's what, like, I try to, I try to show in the videos how much fun Ian and I are, are having, like learning and doing all these things. Cause you know, like the doing, the doing is what's, we're, we're doing this for the doing, not for the outcome. Because it's like, you know, like, I don't, I don't really care too much about having a thousand pounds of lettuce. Like, I'm, I don't want a thousand pounds of lettuce. But I'll definitely, like, feel proud to, like, know that I fed, like, people, like, a thousand pounds worth of people. Like, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be a huge achievement. And then it'll be fun to look back on what it took to do that. So, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, <laughs> but, but yeah, like, 
I know, like, I've, like, I've chatted with a few people, and they've been nervous about what I've been, like, saying that I'm going to be doing, like, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be, like, so busy, because, uh, they're nervous about, about, like, well, are you going to be able to do videos and do that? Um, and, like, no, like, we, we want to do the videos, and, and the other thing, too, is, um, like, it takes a lot of time to edit the videos, it takes a few hours for every single video that that we make, um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's it's menial work. It's it's the same. It's like weeding a garden, right? Like you weed a garden, and it like you don't see the weeds after they're weeded out of the garden. So that's kind of like what editing the videos is. It's it's a lot of like repetitive menial little things that take off a lot of time, and then like in the end you get the video, so you don't like you don't see the editing. Um, but it doesn't take more time for me to edit a video that is of me doing a lot of stuff than a video of me just sitting there doing nothing. Like a video of me like sitting there just talking takes the same amount of time as editing a video of like, you know, me like actually, like me and Ian doing a big project. The, those videos all take the same amount of time. Um, and you know, it's fun to look back on like what we did while I'm editing the video. So yeah, like I'll, like, I'm still gonna, if, when I'm busy, the videos don't take longer. Like, so I, I still have time to do the videos. Um, you know, I just, I might not have time to do like daily videos. It might be like, we only do like three videos a week, but you know, if, if there are three videos a week that are, you know, are fun and exciting and, and are sharing good stuff, then I, I feel like it, that'll make me happy and hopefully that'll make you guys happy too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the, you know, I keep, like the right up here, this like says like how long this video is and it's, it's felt ridiculous for over an hour now. So I'm, I'm going to head out. Um, this, like this video and then the video that I did yesterday of this unboxing, this is like, I just, I was like, I have to unbox, I'm so excited about my seeds, I'm gonna do it as a live video. Um, but I still, cause I'm trying to keep to the every two weeks I do a live video schedule. Um, so this is kind of like bonus video. I'm still going to do my like regularly scheduled live video next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So like, I, I still am gonna do that. I'm not gonna bump it back this week um so join me then and uh till then thank you thanks so much thanks for coming and sharing my seed excitement with me uh i you know it's always fun okay 